everybody, it's Brock, and we got a brand new episode of All About. This is one wild looking fish, and a great one for the spooky upcoming Halloween festivities. Today we're learning all about the walking batfish. Or, we got long nose batfish. One of the videos actually a short nose. And you got a ton of different ones out there. There are red lips. You got ones that are called polka dots. But overall, this video will give you a good idea on how to take care of all the variations of batfish. Typical price point for the batfish is around $60 to get one. A lot of the ones online didn't even have them in stock. So it looks like if you want to get one of these, you're going to be on a waiting list for a little while. Tank size, I'd recommend a 75 gallon. And one built specifically for the batfish layout wise. So the batfish is a bottom dweller. So you want a very thick sand bed. Plenty of open sand for the batfish to walk around on too. You won't want to put them in a reef that is just slammed full of rock. Which leads them to be squished you know, just at the front. Because a lot of tanks will build left to right. And you end up just with this little patch of sand at the front. Not going to be good for this one. You want a lot of good open sand bed for him to run around on. Build some nice rock structures that include big arches, overhangs, and caves for the batfish to stick close to or can explore around. Batfish are a very poor swimmer, but has developed these very strong pectoral and pelvic fins that it uses almost as like hands and feet to creep along the sea floor. It's a really funny thing to see. When frightened, the batfish will use these fins to bury its body completely under the sand bed. So you want a really deep one. That way he's able to get completely under it whenever he's scared or at nighttime whenever he's going under. If you Google some pictures of them out in the ocean, you'll see that they are usually in the wide open sand or right next to a rock. So try to recreate that for them. Care level is difficult. One of the main reasons is getting them to eat for you. In the wild, a walking batfish will remain very still on the seafloor, moving that little antenna on its nose back and forth. And once that attracts a little small fish, it will quickly go for the kill for a successful meal. Whenever first introducing a fish like this to the tank setting, it's a good idea to have a variety of live foods. Ghost shrimp can be a really good choice. Also, smaller reef fish like chromies and damsels. I've seen people even do small minnows to get them to eat. So you need something live in there that's going to entice them to come out and eat. But at the same time, you'll want to practice target feeding them food on a skewer. So put a piece of shrimp on the end of it, but shred it up a little bit. That way it makes it look like he has a little tail flailing around. Then bounce it around them trying to entice them. Almost like whenever you're first trying to get a lionfish to eat, you got to kind of tease them a little bit before they start eating from you. Silver sides, squid, clams are also a really good choice to try. The idea is that you'll eventually back off of the live feedings once they're eating the other foods from you. Temper is actually a very peaceful fish. Just like in the video, they really just post up and hang out in a spot for a while, and then will hop over to another spot and just hang out there. So they're not extremely active. The only thing you'll have to worry about is if it can fit in its mouth, they will probably eventually go for it. So if you have some smaller damsels, Maybe you like tiny wrasse or gobies. They can target them as food. Reef compatibility is a yes. The fish will not mess with any of your corals. Worst thing you might see is he bumps into it while walking around. However, they will go after your shrimp and crabs. So if you have some cleaner shrimp in there or those really pretty fire shrimp, they are going to see those as snacks. So just an FYI, he, if he's in there with some shrimp, he will try to tease them to come near him so that he can eat them. Temperature, you want to keep it 72 to 78 degrees, DKH 8 to 12, pH 8.1 to 8.4, and your salinity 1.020 to 1.025. Everything is basic there for this guy. Keep your water in check. Make sure you do your water changes. When you do your water changes, make sure not to siphon the top of him if he's buried under the sand. Always take a minute, see where he's going to be in the sand. They aren't super sensitive. But at the same time, they're not very hardy. So keep spikes to a minimum. Stay on top of that stuff and he'll be just fine. For lighting, it's actually best that they're in a darker setting. Reef tanks that like to run a lot of blues and purples versus a lot of whites are actually much better for the fish. Now, they will get used to really any lighting of the tank. But the most active bat fish that I've seen 
is one that's in a more deeper blue tank. Max size is eight inches. So you end up with a pretty large fish, which is why I recommend at least a 75 gallon tank with a structure intended for this fish specifically. Colors, you're usually gonna see this gray body with black dots around the edges and on the face. And while underneath the body is this bright red color. Some even have these bright red lips. The coloration on top is going to help them quickly blend into the sand. That way they can wait for their next meal to come by. Diet, of course, is a carnivore. One thing to also remember is that this is a very slow eater. A walking bat fish is not going to be a good competitor towards fish for food. If you have triggers and groupers and other predatory fish, they are always going to eat the food before you even have a chance to tease the bat fish with some. So it's really important who you pick to go with this batfish. Origin is around the Atlantic coast, found a lot around Florida, off of Mexico, and the Bahamas. Compatibility, just ask. You want to be very particular with this one. My biggest recommendation is to get fish that are not going to want to go after that shrimp, clams, and silver size that you try to feed them. For example, if you have like tangs, firefish, wrasse, and clowns that are a bit larger, you can feed them mysis, brine, frozen cubes, even pellets, flakes, whatever it is to get them full. That way, whenever you go in there with a skewer to try to tease the batfish, that way he can come out comfortably, make his little tease towards it, and then eventually, hopefully, they'll go up there and eat that piece of food from you before the other fish even want to mess with it. And again, if you're a little cautious about what to pick, just remember, if it can fit in its mouth, it's just like a lionfish. If it's going to fit in its mouth, you can bet that he might see that as a snack. And that will do it for today's episode of All About. You know, we like to keep it short and sweet. Just give you enough time and enough facts to watch. That way you can decide if this guy will be good in your tank. Hope this one didn't spook you too bad for Halloween. If you have any questions or want to leave your experience with the batfish, please do. Leave it down in the comments. The more we learn from each other, the better off we'll be in this hobby. Stay safe, be kind, and I'll see y'all later. Happy Halloween.